Welcome back, this is part 7. In this video I'm going to quickly show you how I am starting my tin foil frame. This part has nothing to do with the boxes themselves. I can still take those boxes out and I can for a long time yet because I have lots to do before I, I make it all one piece. But if you are anxious to get started on your bark already, if you want to get your tin foil on your boxes and you want to get the bark on there, I already have a tutorial here on YouTube that shows you how to do that. So at the end of this uh, video, it, it will pop up in your screen, or you can look in the description box below. This bark, it's moving back and forth because it's attached to this here. And this isn't totally attached to the wall. And I'm doing that on purpose, like I said, in case I move. I want to be able to take this down and move it out of here. So it is really... It's already feeling pretty stable, like this piece here. It's been hot glued together. This is bunches of tin foil, and I often get the question, how tight do you pack your tin foil? I don't pack it really tight at all. I just bunch it up. I roll out a big roll, and then I, then I bunch it up. So this house used to look just like that, except for I didn't use boxes in my gnome home. This gnome home is mostly just foil. And it's, I mean, I'd have to take a power saw to it, take it apart. It is a solid piece. The inside walls are mostly clay. The way I build things, it's like building blocks and everything that I do just adds to the stability of the, of the piece. Okay, so I got the cardboard cut off. Um, I just took an X-Acto knife and went down the edge. And then I took more masking tape and I wrapped it around the foil and the cardboard. So that's like one piece now. So there we go. We have the frame started around the boxes. Now we'll head over to part 8 where we start rounding out the corners in the boxes. <laughs> 